All right, ready? Yeah. So the first thing you want to do is fill this with nitrogen. You should ask the people in the uh, cryo lab how to do that. This this little thing right here is the cold trap filled up with nitrogen. So it what this does is it traps impurities uh, that might get in the chamber. If you fill it out to the top, there's, yeah, you don't really have to fill it out all the way, it should, that should be enough. Now, this is, a, this is a vacuum chamber right here, and there are three guns. This is the etching gun, these two are coating guns. Now, if the, if the gun shoots a, a, a beam, it will land on this side. So on this side, you have a detector that can measure, um, the current that's, that, that the beam has. So if this line, if you connect the, my two fingers with that line and the point, the intersection point between th this line and this line, that is the center where you're going to introduce your target. Your targets are these little things. Once you enter this thing, move it up to the carbon side or whatever you want. There's silver on the bottom and there's two others on this side. These are little pieces of, of metal or carbon that go in and face the, the, sh the what, what, whatever this is, this beam, the beam shoots up. Now it's instead of hitting this detector here that we talked about earlier, it's hitting the target. And as the target inside gets hit by this beam, it pretty much deposits or it rains on your sample. Your sample is going to be at the bottom actually where this line and this line uh, meet. This is, the, this is where you introduce your sample at. Now, the first thing you want to make sure is that the machine is on, that the vacuum is, is all ready. You want this to be a 3.5 tour, 100%. Uh, now, after this, uh, after the, the, you put your nitrogen in, you want to purge your guns. You turn this on. Right now, I'm just going to use the right gun. So I turn this on, and I give it a good flow of argon around 10 to the minus two pascals about there. Um, now, once it is there, you let it purge for about 20 minutes. Okay, so let it purge for about 20 minutes. Let's say the 20 minutes passed. Now we can turn the guns on. So what you're gonna do is gonna click this start button right here. And this is your beam energy. This is the volt, the voltage of the beam. You want to turn this up to about six. The voltage you can see here, right here is zero. So I'm going to turn this knob, and you'll see that change to about six. All right. You turn it to six. Let it heat up. This is going to heat up the gun. You see, this is on now. This is going to heat up the gun. Let it go for about 15 minutes or so at six. Let's say that 15 minutes have passed. You can now turn it up all the way to 10. Turn it out all the way to 10. Now the next thing you want to do is reduce the gas. Now there's, there's gas being uh, is flowing into this vacuum chamber. There's a little bit of argon in there. But in that, right now it's too much for this beam to be strong enough to be detected with a high, energy, with a high current. So if you reduce the gas flow, the current will increase. And you can see the current of the gun on this side. Right now it's at zero amps, probably because there's a lot of gas there, even though it's at a, t a 10, 10 volts. So if you reduce the gas, you should see, oh, sorry, my, my target was in, so I wasn't seeing my, my, my current. So let's, let me put the gas back where it was, over here. Right now you have a current of about 100 something microamps. If you reduce the gas flow with this one, with the right gun, because this is for the right gun, you reduce the gas flow until you reach a current about 600. You want it above 400. Let's say, uh, sorry, you want above 400. I usually can get it to 600 if I took my time and heat up the gun properly. Once it is at 600, right now it's up at 562, so le let's leave it there. This is on, this is running. There's a beam going, it's being detected right here on this side. So I'm ready to insert my sample. So I stop this, out, this thing comes out. 
there's two O-rings there. I believe it got stuck on the first O-ring. So you want to pull this a little bit and it moved about a couple of millimeters more. That's the second O-ring. That's very important. If you vent without making it to the second O-ring, it will vent into the chamber and it will make a huge noise and you will freak out. So uh, it passed the second v uh, ring. So I'm going to hit vent. This pops out. I put my sample in here. Put it wait for that noise to end and now I can vacuum it again it will suck this this little thing right here vacuum wait a few seconds and now hit in and it will insert the sample all the way give it a couple seconds I usually wait until this goes low enough so that actually it, it can go in. So let's wait for that, and then I'll show you how to coat, and you should be good to go. Let's imagine your sample is in there. All right, perfect.